Okay, in the previous tutorial, you may have noticed the slider knob was slightly off center, and you probably selected it and moved it to the right and centered it if you wanted to. And that's the whole point of these exercises. All of these graphics are completely dynamic in how you'd like to position them and size them. So now, let's create multiple channels. We're going to have a slider track, a slider knob, a mini LCD display with text in it for feedback, a mute button, a phase invert button, and also a phantom power button. So let's get started. I'm going to reposition uh, the slider track and the slider knob. So let's double click on the slider knob and let's type this in for position. We want 130 for Y. We want 307 For the width, we want 79. And for the height, we want 405. Click OK. It slightly moves and it shows us the red pad as well, where you're, uh, what's actually hot for your finger when you're moving the slider and the range. So now let's click on the track. Double click on it for its position. For X, we have 153. For Y, we have 268. For the width, 104. And for the height, we want 453. Click OK. And notice everything is positioned here a little bit closer to the edge. So we have room for more channels. Now what we want to do is we want to create another image that has the mini LCD display. So to do that, I'm going to click on the image tool and I'm going to drag out an image. There's nothing in there right now. It wants to find something. I'm going to browse and in my Aspen iPad getting started, I will find a mini LCD on. Let's grab that. Click open and then click OK. And then let's just right click and select match assigned image size. That way it sizes properly. I'll grab the arrow tool and I'm going to move this just slightly here to align it. And I actually have some positioning numbers for it. So if we double click on it for X, let's type in 19 and 305 for X and Y position. And for the width and height, uh, it will be uh, just what it is because we matched the size, so this should be just fine. We'll click OK. And you notice it, it actually lined itself up right to the top of the slider, slightly lower than uh, the top of the slider so that we have some room for the other buttons and maybe for some text up here so that we can uh, title each one of these channels. Now next what we would like to do is create another button. So let's go to the buttons in theme manager, create a new theme and we'll call this new theme mute. Actually we already have a mute button. Let's grab the, let's create the phantom power button. So we'll just call this phantom power. Okay, now let's select the inactive image or the off for the button and the active image. I'll go to Browse and notice in here we have Phantom Power Off. Click Open and some text comes in. Let's get rid of that text. And for the active state, go to Browse and choose Phantom Power On. Click Open and now we have an on-off state for this button. Great. Let's click OK, and you'll notice it'll appear here in the Theme Manager. Let's create another theme, and we will call this Phase Invert. And for its inactive state, we can choose Phase Invert Off. Let's get rid of the text again. And then for the active state, let's select Phase Invert On. And now we have 
a multi-state button as well. Okay. Let's click OK. Now finally, we need to create some text. And that text is going to serve as not only feedback, but in the future we want to maybe set it up so that we can tap on the LCD display and input through a keyboard the text that we like. So for that, we're going to create an input field theme. Click on input fields, create a new theme. And for this, let's create some text. And we want the text to be Arial. And we'll, we will call it uh, input gain value, or just in gain value. And let's make the text size 30. OK. And we have everything we need here. OK. Click All Right. Now we have all the things we need to make the uh, channel. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come up to the text themes and select, oh, do we want to use slider value? No, we want to use the input field, not the text that we created for slider value down here, but an actual input field, which is just to the right. So let's use the input tool and select in gain value. And now we can just simply pull out some text, and you'll notice that it has a join number assigned to it. And it wants to have some positioning information. And we will set all of this up, the serial join, the digital join, when we're going to set control for all of this. But for now, let's just click OK. And we can grab our arrow tool. And we can center this right into the LCD display. And if you look at my numbers, uh, I have 56 by 80. Or actually, 80 is the, is the width, 56 is the height, and it's 41 by 338 for x and y position. And you put that however you like. OK, I think I'll bring mine up just slightly. There we go. So I ended up at 42 by 334. Now let's introduce our mute button again. So we can go to the button tool. And notice the little right arrow. We're going to select a mute button. And we can just come pull a mute button out. And uh, what we'll do at this point is go to the button properties. You can double click or right click. And in button properties, what we're going to do for now is we're going to say simulate feedback. So by doing this, if we simulate feedback, this will allow us to have a demo mode. So if we're not talking to the box, we can still show it to a client. And that serves a really nice purpose. Now notice by changing the digital join to 1, that exposes the toggle radio button. Now we can select toggle. And that's much more how our mute is going to work, is we want to click it, have it engage, and then click it again and have it disengage. OK, so for now, uh, that's going to be OK. And we can grab our arrow tool and slide it into position. And I'm going to center it slightly below the text box. OK, that'll work well. Now I have some numbers for that that we could use. And let's make this uh, 8 by 400. So 8 for the x position and 400 for the y position. Click OK. And that slightly moves it in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this text box. By holding the Shift key down, I can grab the, the text with, within the LCD as well. And I'm going to move it somewhere else that I think looks a little bit better. I want to level it here. And see, I'm kind of changing my mind as we go along, as you probably will when you're designing. So we still have a little room for the text up here. Text box is closer to the top, and we have a mute button uh, slightly below that. OK. Now let's go back to our button tool. And at this point, let's select Phantom Power. And just drag a button out. OK. And it is ready to go. And 
I'm going to type in some numbers for it. I'll grab the arrow tool, double click it, and I want its position to be 8 by 535. 8 for X, 535 for Y. And it positions itself right in here. Right below, I'm going to have the phase invert button. So let's do that next. Let's go to phase invert, to the button tool, pull out the phase invert button, and I will right click this time, go to button properties, and the settings for it are 8 by 635. So 8 for X and 635. And I'm just putting these numbers in so that uh, I can position them quickly and they'll be aligned uh, in places that uh, I like right off the bat instead of trying to do it in this tutorial and align things and move things around. Um, that's all going to be dynamic, you know, however you want it to be. So now what we have, I'm going to select the arrow tool again, is we have a channel. And by having this channel, we have uh, not only a slider, but we have a value that's associated with that slider with a place for the uh, text to go in the LCD display, mute phantom power and phase invert, something that we're going to want for other channels. 